Hello, everyone, and welcome to another LSE Transfer Room podcast with a very, very special host, a very, very special guest once again, Jack Talbot um, of the Transfer.com Transfer Guru. As we said last time, he came on. We said we were going to come back on, and here he is. How are you doing, Jack? Good, mate. How are you? You know what? A lot better than I was last time you came oh, on. I think we're a bit it's more been positive. Right, isn't it? It's been good. We're a bit more positive. And... A bit more positive. Um, well, so as I mentioned, Champions League. Then, but we're going to talk about that later, aren't we? So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have maybe a little a little chat about the top four if it's still on or anything for Liverpool. How J- Jack feels as a as a Newcastle fan, if he's worried about it about Liverpool at all. We'll have that little chat later on. Obviously. Yeah, but absolutely. Jack B. Jack is here for transfers and he is the transfer guru. And he <laughs> is he is that close to a full moon. That close to a full moon. I don't get, I be... I got, it got taken off because I got the <laughs> half moon, which is fine, like half moon. And then it got the Tiago. And then it went to the three quarter one. And then I got aggregated about, I think it was Ugarte, and it went down to half again. I, was like, oh, I, I will be having words. Don't you worry, mate. I will be having words. I've been pushing in the group chat to get you on the Thank you very room. much. Yeah, full moon maybe by... Uh, the I, feel, the I feel like this is the advert for... Um, do you remember when Jaffa Cakes came out of full moon, half moon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's this, Absolutely. but it's the complete opposite with us, isn't it? We need a full moon rather than a total eclipse. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Full moon on the way for Jack, and let's let's begin with news some bad me. news. Let's begin with some bad news. I, I like to begin with bad news and, and, and ease the pain afterwards. Okay. Right. There's a word, there's a, there's a name here that you might have heard, a player you might have heard of. Yeah. Liverpool fans might have heard of him, Jude Bellingham. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Fabrizio Romano, Fabrizio Romano got the dagger, stuck it in and twisted the other day. Mm. Close to Real Madrid. Is there anything you know from your from your end? Um, Jude Bellingham. So, Mike, I've just heard that despite the media um, outlay, which was two weeks ago, where I think a reporter told a lot of other reporters that this is how we're going to do it. We're going to get it all out there at the same time. Um, Liverpool still have a bit of the line there. That's not to say I believe that he's going to come in the summer or in 2024. Um, I hear that Liverpool are a little bit Shell shocked by the news that uh, Bellingham um, had gone to Real Madrid, and I think it's very interesting and quite telling actually. As soon as the Bellingham news, you know, so we had the media, the whole media thing, like, oh, uh, you know, Liverpool going to pull out now. We're going to get some other players. Fine, absolutely fine. And then, but as soon as the Bellingham news to Real Madrid, the personal terms and his father's pushing it comes out, now McAllister is right in there. Now it's McAllister. Now it's McAllister. So the gap between the 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 media saying, "Oh, they've done, they're done and stuff." There's like there's a little bit of McAllister, but it's not been as pressing as it has now. And I feel that, that and I still feel you know Real Madrid are going to have to cough up the money. You know, there's still going to be twists and turns. I can't predict it. I don't know. Like, but there's still going to be a lot of twists and turns of it. Um, if they get 150 million euro, and I was speaking to a, even a Dortmund reporter uh, about three days ago. And he was like, you know, despite, you know, the uh, what was briefed, that Liverpool has still had interest. But the whole thing is ahead. I'm, I, you know, even as fans, you must be sick of this whole thing too, of it. And like, I'm sick I of it. Last time, I'm sick of, I'm sick of writing about him, mate. Honestly, I'm sick of, I'm sick of writing his name. I'd be happy when the saga's over, whether he goes to Madrid or not. I just, yeah, I just think we've been absolutely fiddled by, by FSG and by Liverpool, uh, you know, waiting two years and, and basically neglecting the midfield for two years, waiting for the right player, and it just did not even bother. Is it right that your last one was Thiago, your last central midfielder? Is it our only central midfielder we've bought in the last five years? That's mad, isn't it? Last five years, yeah. And he, he's, what, 28 when we bought him? So he's a, a ready-made player, isn't that an upcoming one for the future? He's more like a like a, like a a special player sort of thing, wasn't you, when you needed him for, you know, to calm games down and things like that. I think Thiago now, with the injury point he's got now, I think he should be used as a back backup player. Maybe next season, it depends on what. Yeah, one year in. left, isn't it? Um, he's still like, he's you know, I know he's had bad injuries and stuff, and the latest ones like you know, right towards the end of the season, but he's still got world class ability, in my opinion. I think he's oh, like, unbelievable. Technically, one of the best footballers I've seen, technically. Yeah, technically, league. he's on his day. He's just he can do anything, do everything, can't he? Really. So it's been a bit of a shame. Um, with to, I don't know if he's. 
I mean, he's quite cheap when he's at 25 million quid. Yeah, about yeah, about 25 million quid he was. I think it was like paid his five year installments or something like that, like a five million a year. You know how mm. we do here. We know yeah, how, we yeah, do sure. how we how we pay out for things. We pay we pay in packets of crisps. We do we do <laughs> like value we do family. We do fa family value packs. Family value packs, fair enough. I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, I suppose the FSG thing. I know where you are with with that, and like I know there's like the other side. I'm kind of like not the middle, more leaning towards you, but probably not as far. Like you know, but you know your club better than I do, to be honest. Like every fan knows their club better than some. I, th I think if you had to deal with it like a fan, like a local fan, also like being a yeah, that's fan, true. you have to deal with it, and it's it's that you know. You just felt the same about Mike Ashley. You wanted him gone as soon as, as soon as possible. I'm not saying FSG are worse than Mike Ashley because Mike Ashley are really, really bad. But you know they are bad. They are really bad. So yeah. when you're on, the, you're on the receiving end of that sort of neglecting, then then yeah, you, I hear you. your feelings, yeah, your personal feelings are into it rather than just being a, a journalistic head. I've got to look at it as a fan as well as a journalist at some. At yeah, some time. yeah. For sure. It's hard to differentiate sometimes, isn't it? Especially, it's, that's why I don't like dealing with Newcastle stuff, really, because like, if I hear something like, say if I hear like a couple of things like, oh, they like this player, then I put it out. And then I'm almost like wanting that player to sign. So the story comes off rather than being a fan and like just trying to enjoy the club kind of thing. That's yeah, as a, as a journalist writing about Liverpool, there's some, there's some reports that I'm writing I don't believe. And that's not, that's not me. That's not me. Um sharing fake news as such. That's just me writing on reports. I'll give my opinion on the bottom, like a, an half a verdict or something like that. Like if it's Neymar it. or something. Neymar's yeah, going to yeah. come. He's going to yeah, shape yeah. up. So, yeah. so if that came out tonight, and I, I, you know, they write about it, and I'll write about it tonight. Yeah. I'll put it out there. But I'll, put, I'll give it like, if it's something that I really, really don't believe, as such, I'll give my opinion at the bottom. And sometimes I do give my opinion at the bottom anyway and say, look, I don't believe this part's true, but this, you know, this part, this report's been reliable in times and things like that. So yeah, let's go to someone more that looks more likely. At Jude Bellingham. I'm sick of talking about him. Let's oh, just yeah. Jude Bellingham. That's it's the one. It's the one that got away in it. Jude Bellingham. Is it, well, you know, I'm not saying obviously like oh, it's still not over yet. Like I think the wisest thing is as a fan, you know, it's just been arduous. Yeah, move on from it. But like I don't think yeah. you know. As I say, Real Madrid would have cough up a lot of money. So, you know, let's see. But yeah, no, okay. Let's, let's go on to someone else. Let's go on, like, I don't know. Someone that looks more likely. And this one gets me excited, actually, Jack. This one gets me excited. This one, someone I um, really want. And we got an exclusive yesterday by uh, Brian, Brian um, Cookman. I don't know yeah. if I pronounced his name right yet. And he's a Uruguayan journalist. And he, he brought the oh, right. Darwin Nunes news. He brought the Darwin Nunes news. So we got an exclusive of him uh, yesterday. And I wrote about it last night. That... Sporting Lisbon have given the go-ahead for Manuel uh, Ugarte to join Liverpool this summer. And it's all down to negotiations. Is there anything from your end on that? Situation? Yeah, there is. Um, I think, firstly, it's important to say he's a Mendes player. Um, um, and they get a lot of special treatment over in Portugal about, you know, garnering a lot of interest and stuff like that. Um, so, with him... I think the release clause is out there, 60 million. 30% is going to go to his former club, which I can't pronounce. Um, and Sporting will get 70. They don't really have that many other key players they're going to sell. Uh, maybe the defender we might talk about in a sec. Um, so they will look for maximum value. So yeah, it's one where I've kind of I've kind of gone like, well, I'll I'll relay it in terms of what that person is saying and that person is saying, and people can make their own mind up. So I've got a guy in Portugal who brief to us last year about the Darwin Nunes stuff and how the structure of the deal will go through. Uh, not the deal, sorry, uh, like who's going to look after him. Um, and it'll be, Mendes will be taking him over from his previous um, representatives, forging a Premier League move that will happen. And he was, so he was good and he's given us some bits uh, here and there. So I asked him about Ugarte and he said, yeah, Liverpool really interested. They've been talking for like two weeks for this player. Um and then we've had the media, you know, a lot of stuff from Portugal and Uruguay, which is his home country, sort of saying, yeah, the talk's going really well. Liverpool in advanced negotiations. Uh, the person I speak to in England was less, you know, he said he's liked, but he's not that high up, really. And I wonder maybe that's just in terms of like Liverpool's priority being the number eight role and number number 10 role rather yeah. than I think he's more of like a number six kind of thing. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure there must be something there, but... 
it depends how much you know you know if it's coming from portugal like and i think actually neil jones said yesterday didn't he He said you know he's liked but not you know liverpool are going to look at more in the premier league market yeah so um they're, you know, when it comes to your club, they're the ones you probably look at. You know, I know it's great when you see like reports from Portugal and stuff, and like they're saying like all these great things, but also like it is a Mendes player, and the media are going to treat Mendes players a lot differently. They're going to want to do a lot of favors for Mendes because in return, he has a big catalogue of players and stuff. So that's where I'm at with it. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Um, he'd be, um, he still looks like a decent player. I don't know if he's got a bit of an issue of disciplinary record and all that. Um, but I feel, you know, are you is Fabinho there for another year? You've got the youngster coming through as the number six as well, haven't you? So it's a it's a tricky one, Fabinho, because only in recent weeks where his his, his form's been picking up. So for us to say, you know, to rely on that form to stay that that next season, it's hard, isn't it? You can't say. He's going to pick up this farm next season because this year has been atrocious. So, to really rely on Fabinho being that number six, I know Bacetic is coming through. I think Bacetic could he's mid, doesn't have he? to play six. I don't think he has to play six because he's played in like an advanced role this season. He's been unbelievable, Bacetic. I think he's quite a, a very um, out and out midfielder as such, not a, a specific role in Bacetic. Like a rounder, yeah, versatile. Yeah, yeah. Like McAllister, isn't it? It's just some of yeah, 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 yeah. Is is very much like that. So, but Agati, I think Agati is definitely a number six to be looking at. And Cookman said that Agati loves Liverpool. And, you know, he'd want the move. It's like you just said, it's all to Liverpool. And if Liverpool can get any negotiations with Spot in Lisbon, then so be it. And yeah, it's definitely a player that we should look out for. I was surprised to see the Neil Neil Jones um, comments on about. Premier League players because when we talk about Liverpool and, and paying for players, we always tend to go for cheap options. And if you're going to the Premier League, then that's going to be more expensive than most. We um, think about it that way. Maybe maybe it's because of the season you're having, and it's a bit of a session. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And if say you miss out on Champions League, you want someone who's going to be a surefire thing um, to sort of you know because there's always an element of risk. I feel if you go abroad, I'm not saying clubs shouldn't. I like my. I prefer. Newcastle for go for like some winger in Bundesliga than Anthony Gordon, but you know, sometimes clubs just yeah, yeah, yeah. want to, uh, I still you know, can't uh, it will still become world class. I know 40 million, I'm sure he'll like get better, but anyway, yeah. Um, so there's an element of that, isn't there, with it? And uh, and I've heard as well, you know, in March, I put a tweet out, I didn't report it because I didn't really like, I couldn't really stand up, but there's been some bits now about Lavia at uh Southampton. Which could be one, perhaps, but I'm that, sure that, is, what, that is one that's just come through the group chat about an exclusive about Lavia, actually. About oh, uh, really, that we are interested in. So, uh, yeah, I think that's going to come out tonight. I think you'll see a bit of reports out tonight about Lavia, actually. Uh, let's go on to different different Premier League side then. Newcastle, I think it's, uh, yeah, I don't think we I don't think we can find your players anymore, mate. Honestly, <laughs> I don't think we can find your yeah. sell Bruno Gamerish for like 100 million. Like, easy, uh, you could have it was Matt Ritchie. But I don't think you'd want Matt Rick, would you? <laughs> John Joe Shelby. John Joe Shelby's he's left, isn't he? He's Forest, isn't he? Yeah, I heard his feet. Is well, he's, still... yeah, he's been booted out or something because he's refused it, to yeah, play he's or out something. Forest, he? yeah. So, yeah, Brighton, Brighton of Albion, a team that have kept us in the top four race, <laughs> fully enough, and a player that's kept us in the top four race, fully enough, last night, scoring the winning penalty against my night. Alexis McAllister. And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Manchester's Casado afterwards, but Alexis McAllister... Um, obviously, there, there's been loads, lots and lots of uh, reports of her recently. Quite, uh, in part, in Paul Joyce came out about uh, McAllister. That's, so that's when Paul Joyce says something, it's sort of something's happening. Uh, David, cool. he's, he's full moon, isn't he? He, he is, he's not even a full moon, mate. He's like supernova. He's like, is he really? <laughs> he's he's past super moon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, David Lynch came out today and said uh, that we're looking to aim to complete the deal. As quick as we can, really, because Klopp wants this done before pre-season. Yeah, I heard uh, he's been worked on as the sort of Bellingham replacement if that deal did fall through, so there's stuff in place there. I think it's quite obvious who Romagno talks about, who, who he talks to, rather, and uh, it's quite obvious that that player is like so set on a move like this summer. Um, I've never seen a player like 
have his reps twerk as much as Alexis McAllister. It's been unbelievable. Like Fab's tweeting about him like four times a day, I swear, saying like, oh, he wants to move. It's like, it's not even an update. It's just four times. Anyway, <laughs> um, Lynch is obviously like quality, isn't he? And uh, Joyce. So yeah, that, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? And um, quite a versatile player, isn't he? Can play it number six, eight, ten. I think he was playing, it was four, two, three, one. Uh, main, when Brian played Man United, I think he was in the attacking three. I could be wrong, but he looked really good against, so against brilliant, Man United. So brilliant. I think Man match last night, easy. I think he Man match last yeah. night. Yeah, I know he scored the penalty. It's like easy. I would give it to the goal scorer, but he did more than that. He was their best attacking threat. He looked really, really good. Um, but it's Brighton, and I think with them, you got like, I mean, you're linked to Evan Ferguson. I think today, which is you know, he's a son of New Deal. I don't imagine he'll go. Yeah, that's not happening. That's not. Happening. I know. Casado, you um there's been links to um as well. And then they've got um Mittenmar and then McAllister. And they obviously can't yeah, sell yeah. well, we're not gonna sell all you know what Brighton are like as well. Yeah. Like you know, they're gonna it's you know, talking like sixty seventy million at you. Each. Well, you know, if they sell, let's say they sell, for instance, Evan Ferguson went to Man United for 100 million or something like that. Then Casado went to Arsenal for like 85. You know, you're going to have to pay so much for McAllister. And I think that's probably what they recognise. And that's where they'll, they'll probably get it done as soon as possible because they have so many assets. They'll come a point where Brian can't just keep selling all of their players because they've got too much, they have too much money. They'll just be like, well, 200 they may million. Have, you got to remember, they may have Europe as well to contend with. So they don't want to get rid of too many players. because That's true as well. Yeah, they may well. And I hope they do get Europe because I think they're sort of, everyone likes Brighton, don't they? A little bit, I think. Everyone likes Brighton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a decent. I they're like. Decent. I like the recruit staff. I like how they recruit players, and I'm quite jealous yeah. how the players are such cheap. FSG, I'd love them. FSG. I'm surprised FSG hadn't even rang up their recruit <laughs> staff and got them in tomorrow. <laughs> Getting players for five million pounds, and I'm going to. You know, honestly, I'm surprised that FSG have not. That's been the way to do it, isn't it? That's the way to do it. Just get these niche players, and they got Casado from the Ecuadorian league, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where McAllister was before, but they're so shrewd. Evan Ferguson, he's technically like amazing, like obscenely good. Like, you know, could be like next Robbie Keane for Ireland. So, yeah, they're doing really, really well. But yeah, as you say, you know, they're not going to sell them all. So, if so we McAllister. get McAllister, mate, if we get McAllister, I, I, I like that deal, but I feel sorry for him in a way because, like you said at the beginning of, of talking about him, is he's going to be seen as a dual replacement. And there's no way, is his no way. I don't think he cares that much. I don't think he cares that much. People will get excited, you know. If Bellingham goes, say, Real Madrid, it does happen, and you get McAllister in, your fans can get behind him. You can get excited about him. You won't be thinking about Bellingham. It'd be like long gone, like you know, three months, whatever. There will be, there will be fans that, yeah, you know, I I don't forgive FSG for Bellingham thing. So, but there will be fans that will see McAllister as that replacement and see, you know. They'll be on his back as soon as he puts in a bad performance. And that's, like, <laughs> that's, 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 that's where some fans will work. That's where some fans will work. Well, I suppose some fun. football fans can be a bit fickle like that, yeah. But um, yeah, I, 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 I like the deal. I hate that we'll lose Bellingham, but I, I, I do like McAllister. He's a decent player. You saw last night. Is it fair to say McAllister's done more than the Liverpool midfield this season to get the Liverpool top four this <laughs> what do you mean in the? I mean, he's won the World Cup. But like, what do you mean in like in the Premier? League? I meant, I meant in in Liverpool's top four hopes. As as Alexis Alexis McAllister done more for Liverpool's top four hopes. Oh, that's outrageous! I know what you're trying to say now. No, that's outrageous. Well, they... <laughs> <laughs> I can't on, man. you've had you beat Man United seven 0 man. Hey, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm just I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing yeah, with you. that's but, yeah. Hard. He, he has he has kept it. Mine's still alive. I still don't think it's alive anyway. Uh, yeah. Mine's just Caicedo then, Jack. Is mm. If we do get... It looks like lightly for McAllister. Is there any chance at all that we get two players from Brighton? Um, I, you know, Caicedo, it's not, I've, I've just got no information on Caicedo at all. In fact, the only information I've had on Caicedo was entirely wrong during the January transfer window and I, like, completely messed something up. Um, but just sort of, like off the cuff, would, like, would Barton be willing to sell two of their players? I imagine if the price was right, if the price was right and, you know, they push for a move, um, then then it, I suppose it would be possible. But then, you know, I suppose it's Brighton. They're, they're going to make their highest ever Premier League uh, finish this season. Um, last season was ninth, which I think was their best. Um, 
So, you know, they're going to be looking at trying to pushing on to the Champions League and stuff like that. And just in like context of this season, you are at their competitors. So I don't know if they'd be willing as much. You know, yeah. anything can happen if you get with the right amount of money. But um, I just feel there's pretty better options, isn't there? Like, you know, you get McAllister's obviously a really good one. But Casado, I'm sure there's a better option than Casado out there. Well, it's Agati, isn't it? So Agati is a similar position. I do, I do like Casado. I do. I think Casado is like the next Ronaldo. Maybe Ronaldo two point Maybe even better than Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. So, Ronaldo is a Newcastle one. When we saw him see you, I think, and he, yeah, he did. He really, did. really good. He was good for us, actually. He was. He was. He, he scored goals of fun for you because he was an attacking player like he plays with Holland, wasn't he? he but when he, he came to us, he became like a, a midfield dynamic free rather than attacking. Attacking. Was he like box to box with you? Was he? He was like box to box with us, Mark. Not in box to box. He was just a workhorse. Morning, oh, really? Yeah, he was not a workhorse for me. He's a ball, he was a ball well, winner though. for us, really. Really? Um, yeah. And then for you, I mean, in his past, he's been played on the wing. He's a very attacking minded player, isn't he? That's why yeah, Holland yeah. played. They play him at uh, a camp. You played him at a number. Did you play him at number 10? We played him. We had Steve McLaren and we played him. I think we played 4 4 2. We might have had him as an inverted winger or mm. central midfielder or something. But yeah, he was really, he scored a lot of goals, but he could. We had, he had a weird thing where he'd be like really good at St James's Park. You go away, you just you wouldn't see him. Yeah, yeah. You, you know. So um, I suppose I think it was like thirty million pounds. Probably a good deal for both sides. That to be fair. Oh yeah, we've got, we got the most out of him. I, I do, I do miss Genie. I do miss Genie. Absolutely brilliant player. The fact now? that he, he's so versatile. He's another clock player. Absolute perfect clock player. He's so versatile. We'll stick with the parachute then, Jack. We'll stick with the parachute and and we'll stick midfielders. Um, yeah. A certain Mason Mount. I've not heard not much about him in the last couple of weeks. See, it's all died down. It's all been pushed on McAllister, like you see in the last couple of days. Oh, Christ Mason has Mount. it, yeah. That's, uh, that's Mason, Mount. <laughs> <laughs> Mason Mount, is it still happening? Is it still talking? Yeah, I imagine so. To Mason Mount, um, it was we reported on it in January um, about there sort of being a line there, but we had to be a bit careful because obviously this was before he had his second round of talks with Chelsea. So you can't be like, oh, most amounts like trying to push away for a move, like because it, it, you just, yeah. Um, so yeah, it has died down a little bit. So the, the issue with Chelsea, where I hear it is, he's not happy with the influx of players, the wage they're offering him isn't up to standard because he's only on less than 100k, I think. Um, they gave the number 10, 10 to Pudisic at the time. Um, he's not been playing as much. Um, his contract is up in 2024. You know, you've got this, the whole ownership. And, you know, you, Chelsea's just like, I wouldn't call it a sinking ship at the moment, but it's, it's certainly on a It's up in the air, isn't it, at the moment? It's up, it's up in the air, I think that'd be fair to say. So, yeah, Liverpool, have, you know, the, there's a line there of Liverpool. Um, and they are like him a lot. And uh, so, yeah, but, it, you know, I feel... it. Chelsea, you know, the only thing I can foresee of Mason Mount not leaving, because it's, you won't go Man United or anything like that. That's just noise. Um, and all that comes from London, you know, it's as well. It's like Man United interested in Mason Mount. And it's that's like... How the, that's where all the fans are, mate. That's where all the fans are. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> no, it's, but you know that's, I mean? that's, like, called, that's called marketing. That's called marketing. In yeah. No, but all that's the reporters, if you look at the reporters who've done that story, it's all the ones who cover Chelsea. And you're like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. So how do you... Like, sounds like it probably comes from the player side, just trying to generate a little bit. Like, well, man, I don't need a number 10 like Mason Mount. Um, they've got Anthony, haven't they? So, um, <laughs> so yeah, um, that, that, that's obviously quite a major target. And I think that's quite widely reported as well now, like mate, about Mason Mount and Liverpool. And uh, I think he's been very open to a move, like from just sort of seeing stuff, you know, um, it's obviously very, feels very undervalued there. There's been things going on behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, and then Chelsea are saying to their reporters, oh, we'll cost eight, 80 million quid. So you're having a laugh, mate. Like, you're going to reject 50 million from Mason Mount. He's trying to get out. He feels undervalued. He's not signing a new deal. Everyone knows that his contract is up next year. Mm. Uh, well, I don't know. Anything's possible with Todd. There's, it, there's no way players go for 80 million pounds when they've got one year left on the contract. It, it doesn't happen. Unless they're special and they're in form. Unless they're messy or something like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah, no. that, exactly that. Someone that's just something different. But Mason Mount, there's no way... If they get a fifty million offer from Liverpool, there's no way the cat's in that. There's no way and, if he if he's definitely not got not staying. And the fact that everyone knows that Chelsea needs to sell players, everyone exactly knows that. that. Yeah. Everyone knows that Chelsea needs to get rid of it for FFP reasons. And the fact that their squad is just obscene. 
Um, so yeah, like you just go lowball for 40 million pounds and they'll probably like try a little bit. Then you'd be like, all right, 45. I don't, I don't know I, how I much. Just, honestly, for, but... if, if we saw Michael Edwards, I honestly think we'll get Mount for a Fredo. I honestly think that. We'll get oh, for Mount a Fredo. For, <laughs> right, yeah. Fredo, like, 10 pence and a Fredo. That's what we'll get Mount Yeah, for you like your uh, sweet analogies. The crisps earlier. Fredo, yeah, yeah. Well, possibly. I'm just thinking like these cheap. <laughs> your cheap... You cheap things. I'm not gonna go for. I'm not gonna go for a digital TV because I think it's a bit too expensive for FSG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of trying to keep it in FSG ballpark here. So sweets and crisps are in FSG. Oh, I see park. what you mean. Okay, I make no comment. The only way the analogies work. FSG yeah. ballpark. Otherwise, analogies don't make sense if they're not logically correct. No, for sure. Um, uh, I also saw before I came on here and before I came on and started this podcast with you. As I saw your your transfer site. Um, Talking about your Tillemans as well, and saying that we're still pursuing your Tillemans. Oh yeah, I mean, that, that, yeah, that's come out. It's not, it's not um, my story. It's someone else's story. Um, I don't know, kind of thing. I, you know, I, I'm not. I can't comment on it really. Um, do you think it's just a name contract? being put out? Do you think it could be like an agent thing with that? Because you, you, Tillemans. I, would, not... no. <laughs> I have. I don't. I think it'd be. The guy I write has got really good lines, and he does. Um, he's just sort of starting out. You know, he broke uh, Gabriel Jesus in January to Arsenal, or at least he was one of the first to that. Um, you have a lot of – so, you know, he's building up. So, But I, I just I just honestly don't know. And I wouldn't like to speculate either. It could be reliable, then. It could, it could, be, reliable, it could, it could, it could Yeah, it could be. I like to think so. He's a lovely guy, Steve. Yeah. Um, but I, it's just saying I just don't know about myself. So, yeah. But, we'll you know, pass, we'll pass on We'll pass on Tillemans then. Uh, so midfield is obviously number one option for Liverpool this season. We, we need at least, for me personally, I think we need at least three. If we get two, that's not enough. That's not enough. We should have got one last yeah. season, one season before. So I think for me pers personally, perfect would be four. four. I'd, I'd get three get first four. team midfielders. I'd get three first team midfielders and like an upcoming one, like say like the, uh, Scott from um, Bristol City. Alex Scott? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess someone like him as an upcoming one as a fourth one, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Well, Henderson and Fabinho stay, obviously. And then... Uh... You know what? I'd, I'd get rid of Henderson tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I, I know he's technically not there. He well, is there. He came it's on the other day yeah. when you played... Who did you play the other day at home when you beat them at home? It was 1-0. Fulham. He looks all right. Didn't he come on as a sub? He looks quite good then. Henderson. I, he injured yeah. himself trying to do a back heel. All right. He's still trying to do a back heel. He pulled his hand me doing a back heel in, in like 88 minutes, man. All right, he did. The thing is, I think it's important, like, dressing room presence and it like, is, it social dynamics. Yeah. He's it a leader in the dressing room. You know, just to get rid of him, you know, he may not be playing as much next season, but he can do a job, can't he, Jordan Henderson? It, 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 can, do a, it can do a few minutes, maybe. It can it can it can make the toast at Marlin County. It can do something like that. Someone needs to make the toast. But yeah, I I, no, I don't want to get rid of events. I'm just I, I don't want to get rid of events just because, like you said, we need that sort of presence in the dressing room. We need that presence around the club. He's got such high standards, and it and it keeps them that standards. And we we need high standards because I can't, if our standards drop in the, in the club, and it, it's already started dropping in the club at, at times. And look what's happened this season. And I can't. We can't do that. So keeping people at Henson is important, especially with Milner going to Brighton. No, oh. Henson, Henson does need to, to take that sort of position now of, of Milner. Yeah, Milner. I mean, He's Newcastle legend as well, you know. He's, never He's everyone's legend. Where <laughs> hasn't he been? He's yeah, only my he been around, eh? Villa, City. Leeds. Yeah, he's Man, City. Yeah. Man uh, City. Man City, yeah. But it was, it was all right. We sold him. We got him so cheap from Leeds and then he scored at 16 years old and we sold him because... I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? But probably time for him to move on. 37 years oh, old. Yeah. yeah. 37. Uh, yeah, I wish all the best for him. So let's go. Obviously, midfield being priority. Three midfielders, four midfielders. But our defence is, is is definitely needed to look at. I, I, for me, I, I'd get someone like... If I go for a player, I'd go for Timber because he can play right back as well. In case, you know, the, the new Trent role with the hybrid thing where he's going to... We need that sort of cover. Um but obviously, you've 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 mentioned a lot about uh, Josco uh, Vardiol, and I know you've been taking saying that it's been too expensive for Liverpool to go to. Mm -hmm. But there's three others because he is too expensive to go for. Uh, there is three other names that you've mentioned well, uh, regarding that, and one's one's quite close to home, and I'm surprised at that one. 
The Antonio Silva will be too expensive. He'll go though. Like you got you, Antonio Silva will go, but he probably they'll probably want the full release clause, which is saying like 80, 90 million euros saying he's quality. But yeah, the player um the sporting Lisbon defender has been uh, linked, hasn't he? Inacio, yeah. Inacio, um, who I reported on in January as one. Um and I didn't think the um Rathwaite, because he's Everton, like, and I think he will try and push a slight PSV, but he's Everton. It's just that deal where it's just like Everton just going to push, like, oh, I was saying yeah. that, I get relegated. But yeah, no, and that's the I think um, the Parazan are like um, PSG. If you want reliable, he's like, they're like the Paul yeah. Joyce of PSG. Yeah, yeah, in France, yeah, yeah. Um, but does that then reflect that they're going to get reliable Liverpool news? I don't know. I'm like it's my own rep- life report. <laughs> it's it a, it a weird one, isn't it? It's not like it's it's not like we'll get the PSG player. It is a strange one. But yeah, no, I mean, it might put be, things out if they didn't know something. It might be reliably informed by PSG that you know PSG are just telling them, yeah, we're trying to get this yeah. player, but the trouble is Liverpool are involved, and I think they might go there. So that I mean, it happened for us with Sven Botman, like. That news broke via Italy because AC Milan were trying to get him. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, he's, he's someone you had on the list. I didn't know to what degree of strength. Um, Guardiola seemed to be the number one, but again, it was just the price. And I think as the season fell off, they kind of realised more and more that money needs to be going into the midfield rather than the defence. And he would go for a lot of money, him. So I really, you know, I think you don't even need to have like inside information. I mean, he, he looks quality, he's he? Portuguese, 21 years old. Tall ball playing le- uh, left sided centre back, I believe he is. Um, so yeah, now it's come out in Le, uh, Le Parisan. So advanced talks, yeah. But um, I mean, high ceiling as well, def- 40 million. It's definitely a position that I think Liverpool will be looking at because Virgil's not getting younger and he's, he's not really been the fully same Virgil since his injury anyway. So Canate really? is obviously, obviously going to be the future. Canate for me is an absolute beast. And do you, is there anyone else? That's, is there anyone else in terms of defenders to look for looking at? If you had about any right backs or anything like that, I haven't. No, I haven't. I haven't heard of anything about defenders other than that was was given to me in, in January about you know Silva, um, Inacio, um, and uh, Gabriel. But other than that, no, with defenders, I haven't heard. There was a mention of a. I mean, there's another club, to be honest. The, you mentioned Timber there, and I think it's important to know, you know, the Telegraph, like the Dutch Telegraph, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. they are yeah. reliable. If you want to go for Dutch news, they are reliable. But they are going to be informed. Um, they are going to be told by the club what they the club want out there. So a lot of the Timber links, I'm not saying they're not genuine, but I, I feel you, there's got to be a degree of, you know, the guys come out last week saying, I want to move. Like, I, you know, it's like, it's almost McAllister level of like twerking for a, for a move away, isn't it? Um, Mudrick, Mudrick level. Mudrick level. I don't know about that. He did yeah. twerk. Mudrick level twerking. He did twerk for Arsenal. He it's did twerk for Arsenal. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, it comes from them. So, I'm sure Timber will get a Premier League move or, or wherever, like PS, uh, PSG or something. But um, a lot could be spun out by the club because Ajax, I don't know who they're going to sell. You know, they, they typically sell, um, but they've had such a poor season. They've got the the um, central midfielder there, um, Humbrys Alvarez, who might go, um, who's got the same agent, actually, as Sven Botman, so I'm hoping. Um, that the case, Newcastle, and then Timber as well. So a lot of them will be trying to generate a bit of um, attention to Timber to try and, you know, get a bit more money um, in the summer for like upwards of 40 million or something. I don't know, but... Um, but yeah, so I don't know with Tim Bar or anything. I'm kind of just rattling on now, anyway. So yeah. <laughs> regarding regarding Alex, I actually met a former player, and I, I, I again a couple of weeks I hadn't heard much about him. I know he was quite um, heavily heavily linked, very heavily linked actually to Liverpool, and that's Ryan Gravenberch. Is do you know anything on that story at the moment? Did we get mentioned that? No, I don't. I wish I could say yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I knew all about that, but I, it's just not something I've heard. Um, but, so I, yeah. I, I hadn't heard anything for quite a while now, maybe like two weeks or something. But it was quite, it was quite. It seems to be like the McAllister sort of situation where it's close. If that makes sense. He was like number one. He's he moved there from Ajax in the last year, and he just yeah. hasn't had a look in. So he clearly wants to go. I think there's going to be an interesting. You know, I know I said like geographically, 
you know, oh, it's in Holland, so you know, they may be twerking a bit, so like, you know, be a bit more cynical, but at the same time, you know, the plot does have connections clearly in Germany and stuff. So like German like Christian Falcon stuff are gonna know. Um so yeah, I, you know, he comes it'd be twenty five million, I think. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, if trying to budget and trying to, you know, young, still very young player. Is he a number eight? Any? I think he's number eight. He's again quite versatile. Ten player. He's a versatile eight. player, is he? So yeah, I mean, um, there's nothing I've heard. I'd like to say yes, but no, but you know, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Just from the outside looking in. To get do you know in. anything about outgoings and Will Liverpool? We've talked about incomings. Is anything Joe Gomez, Kelleher? Is anything new? Kelleher, I do not hear. I feel like I've rattled off a list tonight. Kelleher. Yeah, he did. Um, Matt. said about Kelleher before, and I think uh, Nat, Nat Phillips was on there. Nat Phillips, yeah. I think that's been sort of ratified elsewhere now, isn't it? About them sort yeah. of like going and stuff. Um, Fabino, no, and Henderson will stay, won't they? Um, yeah. So, yeah, just them few, I think. Um, there's, yeah. no, there's no news about Nabby yet going anywhere. You know, oh, I thought that's been done, isn't it? I thought he was going to pretty Leipzig or something. I'm pretty sure, like that, Florian Plettenberg will probably reveal that. I, I think I saw something, but I've not seen anything since. I've not. But he, he's obviously not going to stay, but I imagine he'll go yeah. back to Germany or something, go to Hertha Berlin or something. I don't know. Back to Leipzig, um, Nabi Kaya. So yeah, and then obviously Bobby Firmino. Would you like him to stay, Bobby? Bobby Firmino for another season. <sighs> I think it is time. You know, I, I, you think the thing is because we've got because, because we've got so many forwards, such class forwards. I won't be that bothered him staying if that makes sense because I like him and he's, he's never really, he's not going to play. If that makes sense. it's not like Oxley Chamberlain or Naby where they're going to be playing in the team. Or you know what I'm saying? And it's yeah, we've got a choosing transfers over that. This guy's not going to get a real issue in next season. We've got Nunes, Gappo, Diaz, Salah, Jota. He's yeah, not gonna get like it. Yeah. So it wouldn't really bother me if he did stay, but it, it, I want him to play football and I'll, you know, it's best for him to go. And I wish him the best. Like Bobby is just, he was the system on it. He literally was the system. He was. I remember arguing with my friend, like, this is about four When Salah first came in and he had his record breaking season, I think it was his first season. Yeah. And he's yeah. Liverpool, my mate's a Liverpool fan and he was like, yeah, Firmino is our most important player. And I was like, what are you on about? Salah scored like 40 goals for you. He's like, no, you don't understand. Firmino is like the heart of the whole thing. And I was like, you are joking. Like, <laughs> but yeah, apparently like, part of the system and stuff, isn't he? It was a sort of... It was, yeah, it was, it, was the, it was the system. I don't think Mane and, and, and Salah would have been able to play like they did without Firmino in his heyday. I, you know, I, I hated saying it back then, but I, I likened I liken Firmino to Bergkamp back then. You know, when he was in his prime, proper, and I just don't think he did it enough to to really be sort of legendary. Not, yeah, yeah, leg, legendary. If that makes sense, in terms of like Burkamp sort of name, but it, yeah, th- th- that's the only player I could link him with in terms of the way he played, the way. He... I know you mean for someone to be like world class ability, tech, but yeah. don't score, doesn't score twenty a season. Like it's not his job, but he is a striker. Was second striker or false nine, or whatever. But yeah, I know Bert Burkham wasn't necessarily false nine, but his job was more to provide, wasn't it? It was the assist yeah, yeah. And yeah. The build up rather than the actual scoring. Um, but well, Burkham was still like immense, so I get what you mean, yeah. So it's going to be a busy, busy transfer window, and and me and Jack will be uh, heads down, uh, laptops on, and we will be writing many, many stories, I'm sure. Especially regarding Liverpool, I'm I, I'm going to be at least I don't have to write Jude Bellingham much much longer. Well, I don't know about that. Let's see, eh? I don't. don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll have to I see can't that. deal. I can't deal with another U-turn, mate. I don't think I can deal with any more drama with that. No, I hear you. Um, it, yeah, it's it like a good window, and uh, I try and get some more stories out, and um, yeah, hopefully they sort of come off. I realise that you know I'm just sort of. The Liverpool like line's only been sort of like a few months kind of thing, so uh, there's like a degree of scepticism about me, which I totally understand. But I feel you know what, mate? Now... For those people that doubt you, honestly, I can vouch for you. I, I'll vouch for you as long as it as long as it goes because you've been absolutely spot on in a lot of things, especially regarding Liverpool. And Thank you, mate. This is, this is why I absolutely I respect you down to the ground because this is why I want you on here because I trust you completely with the the, the stuff you say and the sauce. I trust your sauce. Thank you very I, much. I mean, you can send that sauce over over any time you like. Okay, yeah. Just <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I'll send yeah, it yeah, over, mate. Th- yeah. that'll, that'll be your job gone. 
then regardless. Exactly, it needs me anymore. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, thanks so much, mate. But um, yeah, I would say, any Liverpool fans listening, and if you do doubt Jack, just go back and, and see the evidence right there, and then he's been spot on on a lot of things regarding Liverpool. A lot of things regarding transfers in general, and news in general. But Liverpool is absolutely fantastic. And that, that full moon is on its way. And if it's not... <laughs> I'm yeah, like, that's what it, I'm doing it for. I don't even got, want you got running. until summer transfer window to get it. You need you need a summer full full moon by transfer window. I've, that's that's a my ambition, mate. I that's actually really challenge. want it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be mint. Thanks so much, mate. Appreciate it. So, yeah. yeah, let's not talk about transfers anymore. I know it's no. your speciality, and it's what all we write about at this time of the year. It is. Let's talk about our teams. You're a Newcastle fan. I'm a Liverpool fan. Uh, yeah. Liverpool have five wins on a bounce. Five wins on a bounce, and I feel like I've been a nosebleed with this sort of run this season. I mean, Trent hybrid role has just changed the way we play. We're not we're not playing unbelievable at times. I think we played unbelievable against Leeds. We played unbelievable against Arsenal for half a game. Maybe but not. we're getting the results. We're getting but the that results. That was a bit before, I suppose, wasn't it? That was a bit yeah, yeah. We're, now, yeah. We're still unbeaten in six. That Arsenal game was a start of unbeaten in six, and then five wins on a row since then. Um. As a Newcastle fan, are you worried? Um, I, it, in a way, yeah, right. So not, but not this season. We've I've looked, and we've got five games to get seven points, and then you'd have to win all of them um, to catch us. I just don't see that happening, bar a monumental collapse. And also away in the fact that, like, even if you did get third, like, I believe we're better than Main Eyes, and I believe we're better than Tottenham. And so that like, we'll get top four. You know, I'm just thinking about third. I feel for next season as well. And as good as Newcastle have been, um, I've loved it. But I feel not like fans have to realise, but Chelsea have dropped off massively this season. You've dropped off massively this season. Spurs to a slight degree. And these are all teams that typically compete with the top four, particularly Liverpool. And I imagine, and I think I said this in this podcast before, you'll be back up there again next season. And it's going to be a lot harder to get to where I'm not being funny, but like, you know, like Man United have a goal difference of like plus five or something and they're in it's, the top four. Let's be honest, it's absolute shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. It is terrible. Man United's got, we've, we're, I think we're like plus 24 or something. Plus yeah, five. We're, we're, we're about that as well. But yeah, we're not plus five. You know, it's, it just speaks volumes about the league, I feel, and how like, it's not been a typical season. I'm sure may not, you know, Newcastle in any other season would have been competing, but to be third, I know. Well, I guess we'll have to build on it. So, yeah, of course, like for us now, if we get Champions League, we're going to want to get Champions League over and over again. And I know your ambition will probably is to get the title, isn't it? It's to beat City. Yeah, yeah. But I That's, suppose it's been a bit of a step back. It does, and change. Maybe, it does change, yeah. Yeah, I it don't does. know if you, your ambition was to be compete or whatever, but, you know, you'd be filling up a place. Um I don't know what's going to happen with Arsenal. So, yeah, of course, like, you know, for us, like, you know, we're not fighting relegation anymore. We're going to be looking over our shoulder at you. Um, and I imagine you're going to have aspirations of competing uh, for Man City for the title. Um, but no, not this season. I just think mathematically. I think another 10 games played, I think you probably would have got third because you are yeah, a better side than us. I um, mean, on paper, on paper. On your day. On paper. We've got Brentford home this weekend. And... We've got four games left, and we really should be winning all four. We, we haven't really got a tough game left, and and you're, uh, let's let's talk about Newcastle's fixtures here. Uh, you've got some yeah. tricky games coming up. We got you got Arsenal next. Yeah, we have got Arsenal at home. You're the only type. You're you're the only, only side that's beating us at home this season. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that will be a hard game. They did. They looked all right against Chelsea, didn't they? Um, and we've got some away games to Bournemouth. We should be fighting. I don't know if be, they'll survive relegation at that point. Have you got Leeds um, and Leicester away? Yeah. Right. And them two are them two are fighting relegation, aren't they? Those two are. But you know, if you just turn up and you're knocking a goal, heads can go, can't they? You saw we, we did it with Everton because I was saying when we went to Everton last week, I think you saw the game with like Isaac's dribble and that. Um, I was going to my mate like, yeah, they, 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 this is gonna be nil nil, or they're gonna it's gonna be like two red cards, nil nil, one one. But as soon as we got the goal for Callum Wilson in the first half, head just dropped. They just went like they was gone, and then we put put the ball in the net five times. But it was four one in the end. Charles shouldn't have been disallowed, in my opinion. But yeah, you know, you just, it can happen. But there are tricky games playing a high, away to like relegation battling sides. You know, they're going to be feisty. You want them games that like like against Crystal Palace and stuff where they got nothing. 
they're on their holidays already, as the saying goes. They're on their holidays. So, uh, but yeah, no, I can't foresee. Have, it, have you got Chelsea in your last? We've got Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge, yeah. But they'll have Super Frank. Speaking of on their holidays, there you go then. They'll be Chelsea on their holidays and... as well. Super, Chelsea Super not Frank will be on their holidays. Chelsea are on a different planet at the moment. and They've gone past holidays. They're, on, they're, probably, on, they're probably on the moon where Jack wants to be. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, hopefully he plays Conor Gallagher up front again. That'd be funny. Um, like he did the other week. Um, but yeah, that you know, Stamford Bridge is Stamford Bridge, but it's Lampard's Chelsea and they're just disgraceful at the moment, aren't they? So I think we'll be all right. And even if you did, like we lost all our game, I just can't, you know, even if you've got two wins or something like that, and you, I, I just think, Matt, I just, you just got to look at the way Man United are playing at the moment. It's that's that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Right I don't even think about like, you know, Third place, you can go, oh, is it a threat third place? Yeah, very possible. But I'm not really concerned about top four because Spurs are just doing what they're doing. Man United, it's like... I mean, yeah, you I need two teams to take... Yeah, you, you need like Man United and Spurs to take over you as well as... Yeah, yeah you need another team, don't you? It's not just like what top three. And Brighton didn't even play that well against Man United, I didn't think. Brighton weren't like on it. They were rubbish in the final third, I thought. They're better than Man United, but they just looked off the ball like Man United. Anthony barging into Lewis Duncan stuff. It's just like, what are they doing? Yeah. So we should honestly, be right. mate, honestly, mate, if 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 Manchester United bottle this top four for us, if we take over Manchester United, I don't think I can let my United fans ever live this down. Ever live this down. Uh, forget the seven nil. Forget the seven nil. This could be actually more embarrassing seven nil. The fact that we if we beat Brentford on Saturday night on Saturday evening. We go one point behind. I know those games end, but we go one point behind my night. One point. We when the, when when's oh, it gonna be? But I I know you have you had like a few good runs this season. I know you've tweaked the system. You're looking and but you haven't had five wins in the bounce this season, have you? No, no. I don't you've think you've tweaked it and then it sorted out. Because I just thought after that seven nil win, you would just be flying. But then you we you lost the bomb. What was it? We lost the bomb of the week after the seven nil. <laughs> yeah. And that pretty much summed up the season at that time. <laughs> Beating my United seven 0 and lost to Bournemouth. And we didn't even we didn't have a sniff against Bournemouth. We were awful. <laughs> Did you not? Did we you were know? absolutely dreadful against Bournemouth. I'm, honestly, we we've gone from being unbelievable the week before to, <laughs> and they were bottom of the league at that time. They were bottom of the league. They were bottom of the league. <laughs> How can you go from that to that? That is the of the season. Honestly, you honestly. were like so good. Gapco, it was the Gapco Nunes uh, Salah. Salah, like, yeah. And you were just so good. You tore him to shreds. I can't believe you. I thought it was like a draw against Brentford or something. You lost to Bournemouth. Yeah, we lost to Bournemouth. <laughs> Split for the week after. It was sat- I think it uh, was it Saturday dinner time kickoff. I think it was a dinner time kickoff. I can't stand dinner time kickoffs on Saturdays. We've lost every one of them. We've honestly we've lost to we've lost to Forest. We've lost to Bournemouth. You lost to Forest. Lost was that to, at the City lost, Ground? Was that away? At City Ground, yeah. That was yeah, the pretty good at home, aren't they? I, I was at pub watching that, and I was just, I just sat there, just mis- just drinking my sorrows away. I think it was. I don't, yeah. I don't agree with drinking sorrows away, but I think it was that day. It just absolutely yeah. miserable. We've had some sh- shockers this season, absolute shockers, and the fact that we're, we're we could we're go within one point of my night on Saturday, I think that just sums up my night. I think my night fans are really, they're saying like they've of. Uh, They've over, um, overachieved the season under Tenag. I just think, I just think, if you put context into this now, right? I just, I just think they're setting up themselves up for a fail next season. It reminds me of the Oli season, you know, when he came second. Yeah. And that's not that wasn't really where they should be. It wasn't an overachieving because of Oli. It was an overachieving because everyone else, you know, that season had an off season. I know you can't really say that because. Man United still got them points, but I think Ten Hag is really he's a good manager, um, and I think you know the, as well. You know you've got to compare it to. I know they spent a lot of money, but I mean a hundred million was an Anthony. <laughs> but you know last season Ralph Ragnick they finished their worst ever Premier League finish. He had to deal with that. He had to deal with Maguire. The whole, you know, how yeah. you know the heat on Maguire at the time, the Ronaldo whole thing, which plagued their whole summer. What Ronaldo was up to, what he was playing at, and walking off down the tunnel and stuff. And so he was left without a striker, and he didn't have the money to bring in. He had to get Weghorst in January. So 
there has been obstacles that he's done well to overcome. Um, overachieving, I think it's probably quite a strong term for them, like to overachieve, but he's done very well. Um, but but I think they're limited. If they're overachieving, just because they're coming above Liverpool and Chelsea, but then you'd have to say they're underachieving coming, be- coming below you, if that makes sense as well. <laughs> so you can't have one way. We've got the cup as well. We've got the League Cup, and I know to Liverpool, May United fans, League Cups, Mickey Mouse, whatever. But like, I still I can't believe you there. give them that League Cup, mate. I'm still annoyed at you. We, 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 didn't, we, we was on our mini hot. We was on. Like, we were on a Christmas break. We we're just. I think all our players that had never, none of them had been in the final before, and that's why we dropped off in the league as well. We we're just so fixated on this final, and then it wasn't a good performance at Wembley. It were. It wasn't a good performance. They deserve the win. But we'll play them now. Any other point in the season would have been all right. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I don't have much fear for them. Like at the moment, I feel like on our day we beat Man, beat Man United. I feel. If I'm honest, mate, I, I agree with you completely. Going to next season, I'm more fearful of Newcastle than I am Man United. Quite I, like I that. just think Man United are really like they're in a, a, a really false position, and I think it's a false. I think they're going to give their fans a false hope for next season as well. I really do think they're going to. They actually think they're going to push for titles in that in a few years. I don't think they are. I really don't think they are. I don't think mentally. I don't think they've got. They've got these players, right? They've got Rashford, Varane, Martinez. These are players that's not going to be there next season. You know what I'm saying? Casemiro. They're going to get a bit of likes of Fred and Weghorst, and they get a bit of few. Yeah, they're going to bring some of them in. as well. They've got some the dead players, they've, found, they've got foundation there, and their mentality is shocking. They lost seven nil to Liverpool, right? I, I've seen. I've seen. Kyriakos play for us. I've seen Andre Voronin play for us. I've seen David Ngo play for us. I've seen Florence Cinema Pongo play for us. I've seen Neil Mellor play for us. And we've never, ever, ever given a game like that. Was Neil Mellor bad for you? I thought he was all right. I remember him scoring him a couple of good goals, Neil Mellor. Neil Mellor. The only thing Neil Mellor's remembered is that header to Gerard against Olympiakos. <laughs> lovely cushion Heller. Lovely, lovely cushion Heller to Gerard. <laughs> I didn't even know that was him. That was Neil Miller that cushioned the header. Well, he's doing, he's a good journalist now, isn't he? He's doing Sky Sports, he's doing all right. He's not a good journalist. <laughs> Neil Miller. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think um, he probably didn't get the you know the importance of the occasion and he was too relaxed, wasn't it? And he set up 7 0 like, you know, 5 0 but 7-0, it's not, it's, you're going to something else. It's not even a shot, it's not even like a surprise result though, Jack, either. They've been beaten six three by Man City. They've been the ship far oh, against yeah. Brentford. Oh, the the yeah. ship the ship far a few times. They got battered by Sevilla. This isn't. Yeah. It's not like a freak result. And and my night thinks it's a freak result, but they've, they've been shipping goals for fun this season. And in so in certain games, it does. And they haven't won in a game against the top nine. Uh, all season. No, they haven't. They've, they've lost. They've... they've lost eight and drawn one. That's pathetic. Yeah, it's not. It's not ideal. Um... I, I, I don't know. The, you know, it's the ethos that, that I think weighs them down. They're trying to go... Like, David De Gea has just rejected £200,000 a week. Why are you offering David De Gea more than £200,000 a week when he's, like, probably, like, the 10th best goalkeeper in the Premier League? They're, they're too sentimental at times. And they're, they're too big. I know Liverpool are big and Man United about the same level, but Man United is just... They need to get over this, like, you know, evolve a bit. They're still passion of 99 and stuff and they just need to get you know get into the 21st century a bit more get in the post fergie years they, they're making the right steps it's been a good season for them but yeah there's been a you know the seven years it, it has been a yeah it has been a better season it? It, it does look i think there's promise there in tenag i do think there's promise in their tenag but i really do believe that their mental their, their mentality in their, their team right now i just don't think it's ready for champions league I don't think we're getting laughed at about in being in Europe League next season. They'll be joining us. They're, they're reaching <laughs> past group stage. There's not, not a chance they're reaching past group stage. Well, um, would you would you rather, because I think it's Liverpool, would you rather not be in Europa next season? Oh, you know, that is, I hate Thursday night football. But it's European football and it's a, it's a trophy. But we should win. Oh, so you and me too are. Uh, but yeah. and it's a way to get Champions League as well. If we if we have to if we have to you know what yeah that does open it up as well. Everyone just uses it as like a way of getting Champions League. Yeah, I mean well, I'll be if Newcastle won that I'd be absolutely buzzing. I'd be I like talking yeah, about it. I can't really say like oh yeah Europa League. It's 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 so it's so underwhelming when I'm so 
you know, I, I've, we've been in Champions League final three times in the last five, six years. You <laughs> have. Europa you have. I mean, you had that good game, them good games against uh, Dortmund, though, didn't you? Oh, yeah, Europe? Dortmund. And then we, we got beat by Sevilla in the final because Moreno forgot he played for Liverpool. He thought he still played at Sevilla. What happened and there? I'll go with it. it. Yeah, we, we lost a Sevilla in the final, I think. Yeah, it was severe. Final, it was severe. Final, we lost her, and then Emery, Albert Emery, yeah, probably Emery's severe. Moreno was shocking, absolutely shocking in that match. Moreno, he used to play for Sevilla, bought him Sevilla, and it's it's like he played for Sevilla all night. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there should be an inquisition to Moreno. I remember everyone kicking off about Moreno all the time. Then you got Andy Robertson from Hull City, and who would yeah. have thought Andy Robertson from Hull City would become? Champions League, Premier League winning, one of the best, probably not anymore, but best left back. I still remember him coming in and Moreno still playing. And we had Roberts on that bench, and everyone's really? like, you know, I know, I know, I know you weren't like used to the team yet, and uh, Klopp's yeah. not like gelling players in like that, but it was Moreno. You know, I'd rather someone, you know, I'd rather. Robertson with like one leg coming in the Moreno. That's how bad Moreno is. He had some good games, didn't it? Was he that bad? This is dreadful. I remember one good game and I was on holiday and I watched it in a bar on holiday. And I think it might be his first or second game. It was against Man City, funnily enough. And I think it was his first man, first or second game, Moreno's. And he, he got, it was unbelievable. Like, it was this lad. We just they bought do. it. Like, yeah. It was this guy. Do that. It's like uh, we had, we bought Musa Sissoko from Toulouse for 1.5 million and his debut was against Chelsea and everyone's like, oh my God, we've just bought this world-class player. Never played like that again. Never played like that again. That was it. It was like a nine out of ten, and then it was like yeah. five out of ten. At most, a six out of ten for about five, six years after that. To just do I, it. I, one of the I can't get it. Years. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. How can no. you play like that one game and then? You're on the beach, aren't they? On the beach for years, some of them. Oh, yeah. I'll admit. It. So top four. All right. Obviously, you you know, I I I'm not even looking at Newcastle. I, I stopped looking at Newcastle when you got them late winners like a couple of weeks ago. I just thought, no, I, I stopped looking anyway. It's been, I, yeah. I, I, I've already accepted the Europa League. I accepted, I accepted Europa League like a couple of weeks ago. So for me to even talk about the top four still being on, for me, it's mind boggling. And, and my United mm-hmm. fans were because, you know, I watched, I watched football Terry's last night and I've seen Terry talk. And Ter- Terry's brilliant, absolutely brilliant what he does. He's quality, um, isn't he? I like Terry. He's brilliant. Terry. Absolutely, yeah, he's quality, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it, I agree with him in terms of like my night fans saying like the top four isn't over, and he's he's trying to downplay it a little bit. But maybe it's, I don't know if it's my night fans trying to say like if they do lose it, it's like well, I told you it wasn't over. You know what I'm saying? To give him like a cushion, but really, it wasn't. I think you're over. thinking too much into this. <laughs> no, but honestly, but the top four was over. It was over. Let's be honest, it was over. Well, I mean, was, uh, you, you could do a thing. Didn't you finish third, like four, se- three seasons ago? And, it, yeah. and you were like sick. For, you had all them injuries. At all the injuries, yeah, yeah. And you just jumped that, up to third. I think that was, a, that was a bigger, I think that was a bigger, longer run there. I think that was like a 10 game, 12 game run. I think that was it. it. That was unbelievable. And we weren't that far behind. This season, I think we're just, yeah, this season's just been shocking, absolutely shocking. And to even be in a talk of top four, I don't even want to get excited. If I'm honest, I can't. I can't get excited. Even if, if we you win on Saturday there, against Brentford, you? if we win on Saturday against Brentford, and West Ham beat my night on Sunday, we're one point behind. Are they? Are they playing the away? They went to West Ham. They went to West Ham. We've got Brentford. We've got. I think we've got Southampton away last game. Are they, they gone? Well. We played them at home. Oh, they're just. They're, 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 they're not. You know, they're relegated in their own minds. Honestly, have they grabbed the got you know. Mine's got, we've got four games. I've got two home games. I think we've got a matter of three home games. We've got you've got a major games. game. You've got Arsenal or anything, have you? Like Man City. No, we've got easy fixtures. Easy fixtures left. Four, I've, four. Still got, I've still got Villa at home. I think that's our toughest fixture. Yeah, he's all right. But, you know, Emery, you know, they got beat at Old Trafford. I mean, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could get 12 points. I, and that, for me... Is it we're listing our like top four? What are what we think it's going to be? Like, do you think, yeah, do you think Liverpool? Uh, I'm trying to think of my night's result uh, games now. They got away to Man West Ham, and then they've got home um, to Chelsea, second to last game, possibly. They've got a have a look. I think the 
Uh, I think they've got Bournemouth. I think they're away to Bournemouth in there. One sec, I'll get it up. Up to Bournemouth. Yeah, West Ham away. They're home to Wolves. Up to Wolves, yep. Away to Bournemouth. Away to Bournemouth, yep. A home to Chelsea. And a home to Fulham, is it? And they're at home to Fulham, yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking at Bournemouth might be tricky. West Ham might be tricky. Wolves at home. They've got they've got to beach. They're, they're safe. They're... I think they'll get nine points from that. Like, really. All, I'm just looking at the away games and going, yeah, they'll lose. And then all the home ones, I'm like, yeah, they'll win. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Who knows? You know, anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. But Chelsea... And if, home... if we're beaten by... What, what's the point for South? Far... And they, if they get nine out of the last five, and we get twelve. You're four points behind. If you've played a game yeah, more, we don't get it, do we? So, I mean, so you got to catch up. Oh, you, yeah, you got to rely on them. You have to win all of your games, I reckon. And I think we will. I think we will. Honestly, I, I think you probably will. will as well. Um, do you know? Uh, I don't mean to mention another channel, but Farrell at Empire of the Cop because we, I'm on a show with him every Monday, and about a month ago we were asked to do our top four, and I said. City, Arsenal, Newcastle, Liverpool. But that was just after you beat Man United 7 0. And then the next week, I was like, oh, maybe not Liverpool. Because <laughs> then you play Bournemouth and lost. Yeah, a, a certain game after that, we just didn't even bother turning up. Yeah, Bournemouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got plus nine and you got goal difference. You got 24. 25, yeah. Plus 25. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous, isn't it? Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> You've won your last five. They've won three, drawn one, lost one of their last five. Arsenal have only won. Anyway, I'm just looking at the fixtures anyway. Yeah. So I think you'll I think you can get there. I've said it so often. I just don't see May not have done really well, and they have done really well this season, but there's just something about them which is they've just got an Achilles heel, which is not playing in Old Trafford, I think. And you know, especially the you know, they had to go bright, they had to get something at Brighton, I think. And the fact that they lost in the manner that they did and they've got Martinez out the rest of the season. I think Varane's out the rest of the season. Um, who else? They've got another couple of players who I think, like big players who are just gone. They've got Martial playing up front against Mort Brighton. Like, um, Casemiro's going to get another red card any day. So he got lucky last night. He got lucky. Oh, he did get proper lucky, didn't he? He's a tackle from behind and he like yeah. tripped him like in the tackling. And it was like, yeah, there's a free kick. I think he's quite lucky as well. But, you and know. then Anthony should have got sent off last night. Oh, yeah, the, the kick, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Him after I, know, I know he's trying to go for the ball, but he got nothing off the ball. He just basically booted him. Yeah, um, I'm you know, Shaw, I think Sean got lucky because I think he was on a yellow card before that handball. <laughs> Send them all off. <laughs> yeah. Shaw's been playing centre back and he, he played well again last night, Shaw at centre back, but I don't know what he was trying to do in the last minute. Have they not known not to do it? Just don't do that. Just don't do that when the corner's coming in. That's the it's worst thing you can is do it? is that. It literally is volleyball. Don't put your hands up. I don't know what goes in their head. Just like, just don't do that, mate. But yeah, he did it right last second, and I think that's the only way we get. I think that's the only way we get top top fives. I'm not even concentrating on your, your Newcastle. I think you've got it, and I think you deserve it this season. I think, especially recently, you've been absolutely re relentless and ruthless in, in recent games. You've been like we was like two years ago, two three years ago, where it was just ruthless, and you're getting the job done. Uh, yeah, no, it's been a good season. We are playing well, um, and it's been good. Um, I know we're like sports washed and stuff, but I do feel. We haven't gone into it like, like uh, you yeah, know, like silly. Silly recruitment. Yeah. Like we've been smart. That like, has been smart. And like you know, we've still got we've got Dan Burn has been our regular left back. Dan Burn, Kieran Trippier, twelve million. Um, I know Isaac was a big price. That was sixty three. But you, you know, missed it. You missed it. Time of the season, Anthony Gordon. Anthony Gordon. Oh <laughs> yeah, we bought Anthony Gordon for 40, 40 million as well. Don't know why, but apparently, uh, Hal thinks he can get a tune out of him. I think he's funny. I, I think it's hilarious, but I don't know if he's going to be any good for us. Um, but we'll see, eh? Hopefully, we'll get there with Anthony Gordon. I'm sure he's loved by Liverpool, right? You guys like Anthony Gordon? No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> hate him, dude. He's the worst. Right. Is well, right? even, even Everton fans don't like him anymore. He's just hated. No, I all. mean, <laughs> the little that liked him. And I... I can't see Newcastle fans liking him either. We, <laughs> he might like him personally if it's funny, but... No, we, we, I think 
there's been a few like there was a thing where um Hal took him off against Brentford and he kicked off a bit because he was subbed off early. Um and there's some bits about that. But other than that, I think we're all right. We'll give him another season. And he'll become the new Salah. <laughs> he'll become the new uh, Mohamed Salah. Break the record. <laughs> he beat our Haaland's record. Imagine if Anthony mm-hmm. Gard went anywhere near that record. I'd, I'd stop watching football, mate, honestly. Stop watching I think football. I would as well. <laughs> no, I'd love it, obviously, if it's Anthony Gordon. So, yeah. Um, is she, I think you'll get it, mate. I think uh, I can see a collapse. Please. You know, there's always a lot That's of... That's the other thing giving me hope, is games. their mentality. Their mentality is giving me a little bit of hope because their mentality is shocking. I think it's absolutely shocking. And <laughs> mentality is 80% of football. It's 80% of sport, I think. And once you lose that mentality, no matter how much talent you have, if you collapse mentally, you collapse on, you know... Oh, you look at PSG. It. PSG, you're just like, you know, you couldn't ask for more technical talent there, but because the ethos of the club is just absolutely like, well, there's no ethos, is there? It's just run, no. like personalities run riot. And that's I mean, Mbappe's like, running the club now, and it's... <laughs> <laughs> Director of football, Kylian Mbappe, yeah, he is. It's yeah. so unprecedented, isn't it? So yeah, top four, mate. I, I, you have more faith than me right now, but yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lose hope. I'm opt- I'm optimistic. I might sound not never ever sound optimistic as a football fan, but I do. Every time I go into a game, I think we're gonna win. Every time well, I go that's the way to be, mate. That's the way. Even to be. when we were terrible, even when we were terrible, I thought we were gonna win. Um, let's just a roundup of of our of our podcast tonight. Joe Bellingham, we're done with him. I'm sick of talking about him. <laughs> But You're done Jack again. has said it's not over yet. Well, and we'll leave it at that. We'll leave. All right, okay, yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah it, 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 technically, it isn't over yet. Technically, it isn't over yet. You, you are right, though. Technically, it isn't over. Until it's dotted on the line. It's, yeah, Real Madrid will have to bid the amount that they're asking for. Yeah. Otherwise, he'll probably stay another year. I think it'll be Real Madrid or he'll probably stay another year. But let's yeah. see. I, you know, I, I ain't going to touch that story again in the barge pile, to be honest. <laughs> but I can't be asked for it. I can't be asked You've for got it. To- it's it's too much. It's too much uh, backlash in it. It's oh yeah, much. absolutely. Because I understand this because you must be sick of it. Seeing Bellingham update, Bellingham update, Bellingham update, and it's like even if it's good news, you're pretty just like, oh, I, you're making me get my hopes up again. I so. just I just think everything fitted. Everything looked like it was happening, apart from the money. And I said it all along. I said we will get Bellingham if FSG cough the money up. I've always said that. I've always believed that. I've always think he, I've always thought like he'd come to Liverpool. I've always thought Klopp wanted him. I've always thought, you know, it just makes perfect sense. Number eight, Gerard. Yeah. It couldn't make more sense. He's idled Gerard. You know, number eight. It just Yeah. Agent this is Hendo, the guy with yeah. 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 My heart is breaking just talking now. I'm I'll be listening to a few um sad songs after this. After this podcast, hey Jude, that's a bit of an upy one, isn't it? Yeah, you have to find something else. A bit yeah, more hey, down. Jude's, hey Jude's never been on, never ever going on my playlist. Is it not? No, no. it's never going on my playlist. Beatles song. Wears red. In my life, by the Beatles. I don't know if you're into the Beatles, but that, that's quite sad. I do like a few. I do like a few, but I've never put Hey Jude on now. Not with Bellingham news. Not. Wow. It's a good song. You're going to miss out. Maybe in a few years, though, you might get over <laughs> it. And that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I'm in my. Pension days when I yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, McAllister looks likely. Agate mm-hmm. is looking like the second likeliest, if any. If any, McAllister's definitely number one. Well, I can't say that nothing on that, nothing for me. I'd say I'd say Mount's a second rather than the Mount's second of, oh, Mount's yeah, definitely. Yeah, Mount, Mount McAllister. If you go like who are the two transfers you most confident Liverpool, Mount and McAllister, yeah, absolutely. And then you go McAllister say, first. Uh, yeah, considering just how much he's twerking at the moment, I'd say yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Is it Mudrick level twerking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I imagine it'd be McAllister now, and then Mount, and then I don't know, Lavia. I'm hoping I'm hoping Mugate is above Mount, or at least in the ballpark of Mount, because Mugate for me is, is definitely one of my top targets. Regarding anyone else, Tillemans has been talking about, but not much. Um, Moise Kaiseido, not much on him. However, then it goes to defence with Anasio is the one that is likely at the moment, if, if anyone. As Anasio first yeah, let's just go. So, so I haven't had an update from that. So I broke it in January, but other than that, it's just been um, 
they like him. He was on the list. But in terms of defence, I haven't heard anything for a while. But obviously, it's quite positive with uh, Le Parisan are, are saying it. Um, but then I imagine the record and uh, Obolo, whatever, will come out with a bit more of an update on that um, going forward. So, yeah. Um, I think we'll see more on that when, like, the McCarthy deal's probably over the line. Maybe, like, Mount Argati's over the line. Yeah, but McAllister is definitely looking like the the transfer that is going to happen very soon. And, yeah. and Jürgen Klopp, Jürgen, it's clear Jürgen Klopp wants these transfers done before pre-season. And that's why I think he's been moving yeah. fast in recent weeks, I do believe. Anyway, yeah. Jack, thanks for coming on again. And Pleasure, mate. Thanks so much for the invitation. Really enjoy it as ever. No Rigo, though. I was a bit disappointed with no Rigo, but, you know, maybe not. And uh, Rigo will come back on. I'm sure Rigo is loving it right now, uh, having to work instead of coming on podcast. But he will, he will come back on next time. We'll get you on, Jack. We'll try to do this as often as we can, me and you. And, and Rigo, if he can. Whoever else wants to come on. Um, yeah, so thank, thank you, everyone listening. Thank you for Jack coming on. Absolute pleasure, as always, talking about mm-hmm. transfers and top four. And regarding our YouTube streams, they're going to be more updated. We've got some brilliant, brilliant things in the pipeline. I, I came up with a brilliant idea uh, yesterday, which is could be under the way next couple of weeks. Stay tuned on our YouTube channel. Stay tuned on our podcast and all platforms. Stay tuned on our news, our new website. We'll try to keep you updated. Jack has got is, is getting his moon very, very soon. Very, very soon. Very soon. I'll, few I'll months. make sure that moon is, is coming. And Much appreciated. Deserve, honestly, mate, you deserve it because you, you're putting... Absolute blinders in recent weeks. So, yeah, keep up with us. Fine, mate. Thank you, Zeva, for the invitation. Pleasure to be on. Thank you, mate. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, everyone. And have a good, have a good weekend, everyone.